What's the word, y'all? Let's talk trades. One trade idea for every team not in the 2024 NBA Finals. And this is not created by one singular writer, but instead it is a group of BR staff. So a bunch of different NBA minds coming together to put together trades. Y'all know me as the internet general manager. I'm here for it. Let's get into it. The first trade we see is the Atlanta Hawks acquiring the um, uh, Dyson Daniels, Brandon Ingram, and basically two first round picks, one from this year, one from 2025 for Bogey Bogdanovich and DeJounte Murray. It just feels like, I, I don't want to say inevitable. I don't want to say inevitable because that's a stretch, but it feels like a match made in heaven for one of the guards in Atlanta to end up in New Orleans and Brandon Ingram to end up in Atlanta. That's what it feels like. Is this the package? So it's Dyson Daniels, who y'all know I'm a big fan of Dyson Daniels defense. Hopefully one day the offense comes around. You get the 21st overall pick and Brandon Ingram. Now, Brandon Ingram, the reason why you're getting a bunch of different stuff, including him, is because Brandon Ingram's on the last year of his deal. So it is a little bit of a risk. Um, but if you trade from now, you could give him that big old contract that he's seeking. And maybe that's a reason for him to resign. And then Bogey Bogdanovich and Jante Murray for, this, for the Pelicans. Both of those players fit what they want to do. Bogey's one of the better six men in all of basketball. DeJounte Murray can run the one, so it could be DeJounte, CJ, Trey Murray for the third, Zion, and center to be named later. I don't... Mm, mm, I don't know if I, I... I like the idea of Brandon Ingram in Atlanta, and I like the idea of DeJounte Murray in New Orleans. All the other pieces, I guess, I don't really care about. Next, we got the Brooklyn Nets also acquiring DeJounte Murray. This is a new one. I don't know if I've seen many mocks of DeJounte Murray in Brooklyn. It's Dora Finney-Smith, Dennis Schroeder, one of the Phoenix first, two of the Phoenix first round picks, basically. Um, interesting. So if, if you are the Atlanta Hawks, you're kind of doing this with the idea of a little reset. Uh, obviously, you're not getting the top end talent like in this trade where you get Brandon Ingram, but instead you get some draft picks that low key could be valuable one day. A 2027 Suns pick. Oh, that is the say Suns. Second most favorable from. Oh, y'all got too many stipulations in these draft, draft picks now. Um, but I don't mind the idea of DeJounte there now. It, it would feel weird because if you add DeJounte Murray to that team, let's say Mikael Bridges is still there, you re-sign Nicholas Claxton, it's a better team. It might be a playing team. Like, it's probably a playing team. Was it at 7 through 10? So do you want to give up some of these picks that you've acquired in the Kevin Durant trade in order to do that? I don't really know. I don't know. The Brooklyn Nets' future is, is just a little bit weird for me. And I... I'm going to have an opinion about it once they make that decision. But for right now, not knowing where their head is at, I can't even have an opinion on none of the mocks I ever see. Uh, this is another one of those meaningless trades. It's some, a first-round pick in, in Zeke Nagy for Micic. I will pass on that. My Chicago Bulls getting Cole Anthony, Jet Howard, and two seconds for Zach Levine. That's the going rate. I know there's a lot of rumors about Zach Levine being like a um, a contract dump potentially. This would uh this would hurt a little bit. This would hurt a little bit. I kind of like it for the Orlando Magic, but I could see Magic fans saying no because that's a big old contract. And I think you saw some cool stuff. Oh, no, it's not. I thought it was Anthony Black because of the picture, but it's Jet Howard who basically didn't even play his rookie season. The Orlando Magic could use shooting. They could use scoring. Zach Levine fits the bill, but again, the contract is so large. I could see this being a turnoff with the Orlando Magic. But Orlando Magic, it ain't like y'all paying nobody right now. And by the time you got to pay Paolo, you got to pay Franz, you're looking at the last year of Zach Levine. I don't, I don't hate it for y'all. Send it. Send it our way. Now, we get a lot of guard. That's that's Kobe White, Ayo Sumu. That's um, Austin Reed. <laughs> that's Alex Caruso. <laughs> Alex Caruso. Um, and Cole Anthony, Lonzo Ball will be back. Like, that's a lot of guards for Chicago to have. So maybe that's the reason why you don't. But I, I think sending Zach Levine to a better team for him is probably what the Bulls going to be trying to do regardless of what they get back. It's dope for Ty Jerome, George Yang at number 20. It's a pretty decent trade for the, the Cleveland Cavaliers. To get a 20 overall pick for Doran Finney-Smith, not too bad. It's not as good as some of the other trades that was offered to you last year. But, hell, it's a nice little constellation prize to get the 20th overall pick. Next, we got Larry Markkinen for MPJ. For, wait, for MPJ, number 28 this year. Uh, first round, three first round swaps in three seconds. That is a lot. And it doesn't even fix your problem. I mean, if it, it helps you on court, right? Uh, Larry Markkinen is a better player than Michael Porter Jr., um, but one of the reasons why you're doing these trades if you're Denver is because you want to avoid the second apron. You don't want to be one of the most expensive teams in basketball. And Larry Market is on the last year of his deal. You would assume that he's going to get the type of contract that Michael Porter Jr. has right now. So that's why I would say I would be hesitant to it. Um, it also feels as like these picks might not mean nothing because as long as Denver has Jokic, 
the 2026 first round pick is going to be in the 20s. The 2028 first round pick is going to be in the 20s. So that's not good value for Larry Market, I don't think. So pass. Detroit. Oh, they could have built together a better Detroit Pistons trade. Tim Hardaway Jr. Pass. Golden State Warriors. Alice Caruso for Moses Moody, Gary Payton, and the lottery protected. I, I honestly, if you're telling me as the Bulls that we're hitting a reset button, I don't mind getting Moses Moody back in the trade. Actually, I would like this a lot. And we get a lottery protected first. Send us in. That's only if we're agreeing that Alex Caruso is getting traded. If he ain't getting traded, keep number six here, man. One of the last number sixes in NBA history, really. Um, you Think about that. One of the last number sixes in NBA history because they retired the number. Now we got Jimmy Butler going to Houston for Jalen Green, Dylan Brooks, a number three overall pick. Interesting. Obviously, this is a hard reset for the uh, Miami Heat. The idea of Jalen Green and, and Tyler Hero on the same team together is kind of interesting. And I don't mean that in the good way. Uh, but I think that's decent. I think that's decent value for Jimmy. Maybe you would want one extra first round pick considering this is not one of the better draft classes. But you get number three in this class, which could get you... I don't even know who's mocked to be number three nowadays. I know number one and number two in whatever order feels like it's going to be Richard Saar and, and, and Alex Saar. But like Reed, Reed Shepard, another guard. Eh. Um, Donovan Klingen. Donovan Klingen with Bam Adebayo running the four now. It's not the perfect trade. But it's a, this is the type of trade that if it happened, I'd be so excited. I think Houston looks really solid uh, with Jimmy Butler on the team. That's just me. Next, Indiana Pacers. Whoa, that's a that's a lot of reading. Uh, Mikael Bridges for TJ McConnell, Benedict Matherin, Jairus Walker, a one second round pick, one first round pick, some more seconds, one more first round pick. <laughs> so it's at two firsts and three seconds, TJ McConnell, Benedict Matherin, Jairus Walker. That is a hefty, hefty price for Mikael Bridges. I'd probably just say no to this one straight up. That's just a lot of draft capital. I mean, 2030, do you know how far 2030 is? I mean, he does say it would turn to two seconds. It would turn to two seconds if it doesn't convey. So I guess that is a little saving grace. But that's a lot for Mikael Bridges. He he would fit the team perfectly too. So maybe that's why I'm like, ah. But like, I really like Jairus Walker. And I'm sure the Brooklyn Nets would too. So that's why you want him in the trade. Uh, we got Kelly Olenek for Norman Powell. Cool. Like if it's just a role play for role play trade, I'm not going to sit here and try to dissect it. This is the same exact trade we talked about last week. I'm not going too into it. I don't understand the idea of these three players and just two first round picks and a swap being good enough to go get a star, star player. If the Lakers can pull it off, salute to them. But it, it feels far-fetched to me. It just really does feel far-fetched to me. Got my dog in the back. He's tripping, having a nightmare or something. Um, then we get the Memphis Grizzlies. I Jax for Saltiel Diamond, Zaire Williams. I actually don't hate this trade both ways. It's not one of those ones that's going to break the league or nothing, but I think it's a good fit for both teams. You know, you think about having guys like Jairus, you having like Pascal Siakam who can run some small ball five and stuff. And, and, and if you bring it back, Obi Toppin on top of that, it's just a log, log jam in the front court. Zaire Williams, I have not sold all my Zaire Williams stock. It ain't got a lot of it left, but I ain't sold all of it. And he can he can he projects to be really decent defender. And it felt like in that last series for Indiana, they could use more bigger bodies, like bigger wings to defend. Zaire could be kind of that. And Salty Aldama is fine, I guess. Uh, Miami Heat, tr literally just swapping picks. That's so. Oh man, we couldn't come up with something cooler than that. Something cool. Where's the Tyler Hero trades? Are they dead? Are they all the Tyler Hero trades dead? Next, we have the Milwaukee Bucks. Io DeSumo for Pat Connaughton in 23. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm biased Bulls fan. Biased Bulls fan here. This is one of the worst trades they've ever... I'm sorry. You see, I was, I'm watching Harry Potter too. I ain't never watched the Harry Potter series before. So I was doing that before I hit record. This is one of the worst trades you can draw up. Io DeSumo. I, I want y'all to... What's, what's um that one clip? You have no idea how good Tim Duncan is. I don't think y'all understand how good Ayo DeSumo was for the second half of the season. So trading him for the... And his contract is, what, two years, 22 million left? I'm good with keeping him on the team. He averaged 12 points per game this season. But again, if we just look at the last, let's say, uh, couple months, these are his post-All-Star numbers. 17 points per game, five assists, three and a half rebounds, 50... Yeah, we're going to round up. 50% from three, 38%... Or 50% from the field, 38% from three. I don't know if y'all was really watching if you think that the Pat Connaughton and a late first round pick is enough for Io on one of the better contracts. But also, I'm a biased Bulls fan that watched him all season long and I watched his progression, so miss me with this BS. This will be highway robbery for the Milwaukee Bucks. Minnesota Tim. Oh. 
Ooh. Um, if you if this trade right here, Aaron Neesmith, Jairus Walker, and the first round pick or oh, second round pick this year, if you all if you offer this or Minnesota offers this trade to you, you say yes and you don't look back and you accept Jaden McDaniels onto the team because he is that wing that you need right now. Um, this for Minnesota is like, hey, we got a little ahead of ourselves paying all of these people money. Aaron Neesmith is on a smaller long long term contract. Obviously, Jairus Walker's on his rookie deal right now. It makes sense if Minnesota is trying to avoid that second apron under management. Other than that, you keep Jaden McDaniels. But Jaden McDaniels on the Pacers would be ridiculous. He would be perfect. I wouldn't lie. Uh, Pelicans getting Darius Garland for Brandon Ingram in the first round pick. I love it. I love it. This is the first round pick that they deferred. Um, they deferred 2024 to get this one. I am actually a fan of this trade as well. Again, it feels like the Pelicans are going to try to trade Brandon Ingram for a true point guard, whether it be DeJounte, Trey Young, or Darius Garland. I like this trade for DG to PG, get him back to a place where he can feel real comfortable. And I think him and Zion will be great together. Next, we got the Knicks acquiring Mikael Bridges. Now, I thought I read something that the last time both of these New York teams made a trade together. Look how happy he is. The last time both New York teams made a trade together was in the 70s, so it's been 50-plus years. Deuce McBride, Mitchell Robinson, the 24th overall pick, Milwaukee's 2025 first-round pick, and another first-round pick, and then another first-round pick. Oh, my God. Three first-round picks. I'm sorry. One, two, three, four first-round picks, technically. And um, Mitchell Robinson. So you're probably like, hey, we're going we're gonna to bring back Isaiah Hardenstein, give him that money. Deuce McBride's probably a long log jam for him to be like, I mean, he can go to Brooklyn and be, like, potentially in the starting lineup full time, I guess. Uh, actually, I don't love it as much as I thought I did when I first saw this. When I see that it's basically it's four first-round picks and two seconds and Deuce McBride, I'm kind of like, ah. And, and does that does that mean I'm low on Mikael Bridges? Absolutely not. I think Mikael Bridges is a stud, and he would fit this team, like, really well. But also, like, what does that new lineup? Does Josh, Josh Hart's probably going back to the bench. So you'll have uh, Jalen Brunson, Dante DiVincenzo, Mikael Bridges, Julius Randle, Isaiah Hartenstein. So really, really good starting five with Josh Hart coming off the bench. I don't hate it, but again, you're, you're giving up a lot. Like if you think four first round picks, you probably want a star. And Mikael is not a star. He's really, really good at what he does, but he's not a star. But he does look extremely happy in his picture. So maybe you should bring all the Nova boys together. Oh, I love this. I love this. Denny Abdiya, I've said it before, Denny Abdiya is like, I saw a tweet a little while ago that was like, who is the next guy, Who is the next Aaron Gordon? Not literally Aaron Gordon, but Aaron Gordon was on a bad team, a high lottery pick, went to the Denver Nuggets and fit his role perfectly. I think Denny Abdiya can be that guy if the three-point shooting that we saw this year is really him. Again, small sample size is one season opposed to the first couple years of his career where he wasn't a great three-point shooter. But if you're telling me that he's the three-point shooter that he was this year, he defends well, he moves the ball, he's a great slasher and cutter, he hits the three-point shot. He is like kind of one of the guys that you would want if you're OKC. And Josh Giddy, number 12, and then one more first-round pick for Miami, if that's the price, honestly, I would, I would do this deal for OKC. I think he fits still perfectly, again, if the jump shot is real. Um, and that's not that's not bad value for him if you're the Washington Wizards. You get a guard and Josh Giddy, and when him there, you kind of allow Josh Giddy to turn into the player that you think he might be able to be if he had the ball in his hands more. Um, yeah, I don't I don't I don't hate this at all, man. I don't hate this trade. I don't hate this trade at all. I, do I dare say that I like it? Maybe. Um, Orlando Magic and Anthony Simons for Cole Anthony, number eighteen, and one more first. I, I don't really have an opinion on Anthony Simons anymore. Obviously, he's a really good NBA player. He, he would he fits some of the stuff that they, not some of the stuff, he fits a lot of the stuff that the Orlando Magic need and is like a bucket getter. And this is a smaller price than some of the other bucket getters that could be on the market. So maybe that's a reason to be interested in it. And he would have the defensive backside in the Orlando Magic to protect him. I don't hate it for the Orlando Magic. Honestly, if I am the Portland Trailblazers, that's why I, say, I don't really have an opinion. I don't know if you feel like that's adequate value for him. Again, he's not no barn burner. It's not one of the top 40 players in the league. I don't know how to feel. I don't know how to feel. I'm going to move on. Uh, we got Dyson Daniels, Larry Nance Jr. for Yusuf Nurkic in the 22nd overall pick. I don't understand why Dyson Daniels in so many trades. Maybe there's something that I'm missing. I love Dyson Daniels as a player, man. Honestly, I do. I feel like if he would have played a full season and got real minutes like real real minutes like starter minutes eventually he'd be an all defensive caliber player so i don't really love the idea of trading him away especially for goddamn use of nurkic pass hard pass 
Bogey Bogdanovich for 16. Okay, trade him into the salary cap, basically. Wouldn't be a bad pickup for the 76ers. The Hawks would probably want a little bit more, unless they're completely, completely blowing it up. Um, so I kind of like that deal if I'm the 76ers, because his contract is not big enough to prevent you from going to get one of the other guys that you want. And he could start, I guess, alongside Tyrese Maxey. But I really like him as a six-man. I mean, he probably wants more at this point in his career. I think he's like 30, 31. He probably wants more than being a six-man, but hell, he's really good. He's really good at being a six-man. Uh, Portland Trailblazers, so this is a different trade for Anthony Simons um, going to the Orlando Magic. It's Anthony Black in one first round pick. I think I like this trade more than the previous one. Um, I think I like that trade more than the previous one because Anthony Black show flashes to me this season. I think defensively he was really good once they had all those injuries and they went on a nice win streak. Him and Goga Batazia slide into starting lineup like moments i really enjoyed that and again he was one of the younger players in the draft so it's like hey we got another guy that could come onto the team it's not gonna be a lot of shooting over there in portland but this is what technically year two of their teardown so it's not bad value i don't think but maybe it is i don't know uh doe for davion chris dorte in a top 10 pick top 10 protected pick in 2027 sure sure is it some of these trades it's like okay does that what does that do for the kings it makes them slightly better for sure but are they competing out west probably not san antonio spurs get malcolm brogdon robert williams the 34th overall pick for keldon johnson and zach collins i've said it before i think that keldon johnson is like the odd man out over there in new um with the with the spurs so it kind of makes sense to do something like this you get a veteran point guard and malcolm brogdon you get robert williams both of these dudes have crazy injury history so maybe that would turn me off from doing this trade but i like if you want to accelerate the timeline a little bit but not not too much it's a trade that you could potentially potentially do i i, I guess spur um, uh raptors otel Bazi for moses moody hard pass uh whoa a Cade cunningham trade is this the first k cunningham trade i've seen on in one of these videos i think it might be let's lock in k cunningham for keontae george taylor hendricks a top uh, the 10th overall pick in this year's draft a 2025 first round from cleveland a 2027 first rounder from la and a 2027 first rounder from minnesota well i i i don't really understand why you would trade k cunningham right now. i don't understand it He'll be 22 when the season starts, which is still really, really young. I, you know, no, 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 no. I know it's, oh, it's new front office, new management and stuff, but I was about to say, these draft picks don't mean nothing if they're going to miss on all of them. New management, new front office. I'm not trading uh, the first round pick three years into his career. After one year where he didn't even play, and then the other years, he didn't have anybody around him that could shoot the goddamn ball. I want more. I want a bigger sample size with Kay Cunningham before I start drawing him traits. If you the Jazz, you do this trade, though, because I think Kay Cunningham and Larry Marketing would be kind of crazy. Last trade is another Josh Giddy going to the Wizards trade, but this time it is for Kyle Kuzma. Another guy that I think would go to uh, OKC and perform really well. Bigger wing. Obviously, he knows what it takes to win um, as he was the sixth man on that 2020 Lakers team. Wouldn't be a bad pickup for them. It's Josh Giddy and base one first round pick from next season. Why is it split six different ways? That is so crazy. The draft picks can you can trade draft picks within draft picks right now. That is insane. Insane. Um, okay. It was some good trades in there, some bad trades in there. Again, it's all it's really just about a it's a thought experiment more than anything, man. It's a thought experiment. 